Welcome back, guys. So as we have discussed in the previous lecture, a uh, specific implementation of a programming language, uh, whether it will be ST interpreter, bytecode interpreter, or any type of compiler, doesn't really matter. And uh, what matters here is the fact that the final runtime semantics should be preserved, uh, right? Regardless of the implementation, we should see exactly the same result. And uh, from this perspective, we agreed to focus first on the AST interpreter, and uh, we'll be able to implement uh, full semantics of the programming language. So let's start talking about ASTs and uh, see different formats uh, which you can use when designing your programming language. Okay, so let's take some simple expression in the high-level programming language. And uh, when we think about tree structure, right, so AST stands for tree, uh, the first thing which comes in mind uh, is using something like a JSON encoded format, uh, right? For example, here we see that each expression has type, right, or like assignment, uh, identifier, addition, literal, etc. And uh, each expression may have some other components related to this type. And so this exactly encodes the tree, right? As we can see here, uh, left hand side, right hand side, and uh, the right hand side here is a complex expression itself and also has left hand side and right hand side. Uh, however, this AST format is not the only one, right? Since we will be working a lot with the ASTs in our code, uh, we need to have some more convenient and concise format. And so uh, let's see how we can simplify this expression. Uh, well, the first step, for example, uh, we can agree, uh, instead of using the actual property names for the expression parts, uh, we could use, for example, indices. Right? For example, we could agree uh, that the type of the expression will always have index 0. Right? And it looks like this. And exactly the same we have uh, with other expressions, like identifier, addition, and literal all have index 0. And uh, all the other subparts of the expression can just take next indices. Uh, for example, left becomes uh, index 1 and right becomes index 2. And uh, with the same success, we convert all the other values and now expression looks like this. Uh, well, in fact, doesn't look much simpler yet. However, since we use indices now, this AST doesn't need to be an object anymore, right? It doesn't need to be a map anymore and can be just a simple array, right? Since arrays work with indices, uh, we can just convert it to a plain array. Uh, again, exactly the same index 0 of the array, uh, 0, 1, uh, 0, 0, 1, and 0, 1. And uh, 1, 2 here. Uh, looks simpler, but let's see how else we can simplify it. Uh, for example, the operators, like assignment and addition, uh, we can use just the actual symbols. And uh, assignment becomes just a set instruction, and addition just becomes plus sign. Uh, for identifier expressions, the value of the identifier, such as total or current, already defines that this is identifier. Uh, there is no other way uh, we can confuse this expression with anything else, so we don't actually need the type tag here. And instead of being an array, uh, this can be just identifier itself. And the same with the current. And it looks like this. Pretty much the same with the literal. The value 150 is already tells us that this is a literal. And we use the same approach, and it looks like this. And when we shrink this expression, now it looks much simpler. Uh, still, it's exactly the same expression. We have the same type tag, the same left-hand side, right-hand side. Again, type tag, left-hand side, right-hand side. But it already looks much simpler. And if we need to write such expressions manually, uh, it will be much more convenient uh, than having that uh, initial larger JSON structure. And uh, in fact, uh, there is actually a string representation for this AST format, and it's called as expression. Right, or symbolic expression, and uh, which is nothing but the syntax of the programming languages such as Scheme, Lisp, Racket, and other uh, Lisp-based languages. Right, as you can see, it's one-to-one -one match. Uh, just instead of using uh, square brackets, we use parentheses in S expression. Uh, we don't need to quote strings here to represent the identifiers and operators, uh, but it's pretty much the same. And the main advantage of using specifically this AST format is that it directly corresponds to the JavaScript arrays or Python lists, which means we don't need an extra parser here. That is, we can start directly implementing our interpreter, uh, consuming these AST expressions, and uh, just writing our logic. And just to reiterate again, this is identical semantics as we had uh, in the initial AST format. Uh, but obviously writing this in S expression much simpler and much easier. Okay, now when we have talked about AST format and uh, chose which AST format we'll be using, it is a good time to start talking about our language. So, please meet Eva, uh, the dynamic programming language with simple syntax, functional heart, and uh, object-oriented support. 
And uh, the origins of the evil language might come from the uh, Eve, the first woman, or in the Russian version, Yeva. Uh, but in fact, the evil language stands for Evel. And what is Evel? Well, it is no less but the core of any interpreter, right? The heart of any interpreter. That is when you build an interpreter, uh, regardless AST interpreter or bytecode interpreter, that is virtual machine, you implement specifically the function which is called eval. Now, eval stands for evaluate, that is obtaining a value of some expression, and which means defining the semantics for this expression. So to understand what it does, uh, let's start looking at eva expressions and uh, we'll see some examples. So first of all, we have agreed on the expression format, right? The index zero uh, will be specifically the type tag uh, and which may be followed by the multiple arguments or operands. So let's take a look at some examples. Uh, the first expression here is the addition, uh, because its type tag is plus, that is addition, and uh, which is followed by the two operands, numbers 5 and 10. Right, so when the eval is called for this expression, uh, it should produce the value 15. Uh, the next expression here is the assignment, since the type tag is uh, assignment. And so we also may have some complex expressions. For example, the if expression uh, has itself some sub-expressions. Okay, let's take a look at more complex examples and uh, consider function declaration. So a function declaration creates a function or defines a function. And so here we see examples uh, from Python and JavaScript and uh, pretty much the same we have in Eva. Uh, as you can see, I borrowed the def keyword from Python. Uh, we also have the function name, list of parameters and the function body. Uh, now we should also say that all functions in Eva will be closures. Uh, recall the example from the first lecture uh, when we have compared PHP and JavaScript and uh, some bindings from the outer scope uh, were not captured by PHP but uh, has been captured by JavaScript. So in Eva will be captured correctly and uh, it will be exactly the same semantics as in uh, JavaScript and Python. All right, let's take a look at one more example and uh, consider lambda expressions or anonymous functions. Uh, in JavaScript, they are called arrow functions. Uh, in Python, they are lambda functions. And uh, as you can see here, I also borrowed the lambda keyword. And uh, a lambda can be created at runtime, passed as a parameter, for example, as a callback, uh, assigned to a variable, and even can be immediately applied. Uh, right in this case, as you can see, we create a lambda function and immediately call it, uh, that is, apply to value 10. Right, so the result of this expression in all three languages uh, should be 100. And so we call such functions immediately invoked lambda expressions, or illy. Okay, so these are examples of the expressions uh, we'll be covering uh, in Eva. Now, before starting any project, we need to talk about design goals. I write what specifically we want to achieve. And uh, for Eva, this will be, uh, well, first of all, simple syntax, right? As we said, we'll be using S expression, uh, which will allow us defining expressions generically uh, for uh, specific operators or function calls, and we'll be using just uh, JavaScript arrays for this. Now, everything in Eva will be an expression, right? What is an expression? Uh, at this point, we need to talk about difference between statement and expression. For example, consider this while loop in JavaScript. So in JS, the while is the statement. What is a statement? It's an operation which doesn't return a value, right? It does something, but there is no actual value produced by this operation. In contrast, we said that in Eva everything will be an expression, including the while loop. Uh, at first glance, there's no any difference here, but expression, in contrast with a statement, produces a value. What this means, it is not possible to assign uh, a result of a while loop in JavaScript to a variable. Right? There is no even the value of a while loop. Uh, but it will be pretty legal and actually normal in Eva. Right? We can uh, calculate some value in the while loop and assign it directly to a variable. And as in many functional programming languages, uh, we will not have explicit return instruction, right, return statement. Uh, instead, the last evaluated expression will be the result uh, of the whole evaluation. Uh, we're going to support first class function, right? What is first class function? Uh, well, it's a function which can be assigned to a variable, uh, again, passed as a parameter and returned as a value, that is, as a closure from another function. Right. Uh, here is the closure example in the JavaScript again, uh, and we have one-to-one -one match uh, in Eva. So functions will be closures. And also concept of the closures assume that language implements the static scope, and we'll see the difference between static and dynamic scope uh, during this class. 
And uh, as we have seen, we're going to support uh, Lambda functions or anonymous function expressions and also ELIS. Uh, that is being able to create a function and directly call it. Now we're going to support both paradigms, uh, functional programming and imperative programming. Uh, right, for example, first operates with the concept of the functions mainly. And uh, in this case, again, the function should be first class. And the second mainly operate with the concept of the state object-oriented programming and imperative set of instructions. Now, uh, namespaces and modules are very good uh, abstractions to organize the code and to put them into uh, shareable entities. So we're going to support them too. And uh, as we said, uh, for imperative parts, we're going to support object-oriented programming and uh, talk about both uh, class-based and uh, the prototype-based models. So these are design goals. And in the next lecture, we'll start building already first expressions in our interpreter, and we'll talk about self-evaluating expressions. Okay, that's it for today. Thanks, and see you in the class.